Okay, so now moving on to regenerative braking. For those of you who have driven a hybrid or electric vehicle, you'll probably be somewhat used to regenerative braking, but probably not used to how strong it is on this car. Um, as soon as you back your foot up off of the accelerator, um, the car is going to regenerative brake quite a bit. And this can be a little bit weird for some people, especially when you're first new to it. Um, once you learn it, I think it's really great. I think that you will love it. Yeah, give it give it a few minutes because it is weird in the beginning, but one pedal driving is the best. Right, not having to switch between gas and brake, gas and brake, gas and brake really saves your brain and your foot some much needed energy. And your brake pads. Right. Now, so you can change it to low if you want, and that will get you a little bit more coast, um, sort of that just coasting feel that you get from most uh, gas automobiles. Um, but I'm going to leave it on standard. Then there is traction control. Let's move on to slip start. It says used to help free vehicles stuck in snow, sand, or mud. So this is basically, it allows the, the tires to spin a little bit more to try and get you out of basically when you are slipping. So when you take your foot off of the brake in this car, you will not creep forward unless you turn on creep. This simulates having an automatic transmission vehicle which creeps forward um, when you take your foot off of the brake. Um, I like it off. Me too. It's, it's very nice to have absolute control over the vehicle. All right, so moving on to autopilot. This is uh, where you turn on and off autopilot. That's auto steer right here, which is still in beta at the time of recording. And keep in mind that these settings are tied to your driver profile. So you might be driving along and letting your new buddy drive the car and you can't do some of these features. It's probably because they're shut off here in the setting menu. Right. So there's only three different adjustments here. You can adjust the cruise follow distance, which you can actually do with your right scroll wheel. So I can adjust that. I don't even have to go into the autopilot menu, menu to adjust that. I can do that right from my scroll wheel. And so wait, it goes from one to seven? Yeah, so it goes from one, which is about one car length um, distance between the car in front of you, all the way back to about seven car lengths. Now you can turn on and off auto steer. Um, if you want to use autopilot, you have to turn on auto steer beta. Turning it on means that you need to read through all of this sort of stuff in order to say, yes, I agree to all of the terms and conditions here. It's important that you read some of these things. Um, all of these things. It's, it's an assist feature that requires you to keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times. It is designed for yes. use on highways that have a clear, that have a center divider and a clear lane markings. Don't just skip it. Read and it. Hit, yes, read it. Um, now auto lane change. What this allows you to do is turn on your blinker while you're in autopilot. The car will automatically change lanes safely for you. Um, really neat feature. So, but I do want to point out you should still you're still the driver of the car. Don't rely on the car to to safely change lanes. Yes, it has sensors, but you are at the moment better than those sensors. Right. Now, of course, there is the ever important uh, gear icon. So there's the speed limit warning. So what this will allow you to do is when you're driving a little indicator here appears, it'll read all the street signs around you so it knows what the speed limit is. What this will allow you to do is it will make this a little bit bigger when you're going over the speed limit so that way you know that you're going over the speed limit um, to let you know. You can also change it to chime so that it'll actually make a noise when you're going over the speed limit. That could get annoying. Maybe you set it to display. It depends on where you live and what the rules are and everything like that. Now, autopilot speed limit can be either relative or absolute. So you can either set an absolute speed limit of say 50 miles an hour while you're in autopilot, or you can set it to relative to what the speed limit is, which means that you can go up to 20 miles an hour over the speed limit while still in autopilot. Now there are some speed limits in autopilot that are just general, like you, I'm pretty sure you can't go over around 90 or 100 miles an hour. Moving on, forward collision warning. So this will give you um, an indication on whether you are going to hit something. Basically, if something is moving slower than you in front of you, um, or if something has come out into the way, it will beep very loudly for you to hear and hopefully step on the brake. You can set it to off if you never wanna hear it. You can set it to late if you wanna hear it just at the very end if you're doing a lot of driving, which you're probably doing a lot of bumper to bumper, a lot of quickly slowing down. Maybe you leave it on late. Medium if you want sort of just the, probably where a passenger would say, hey, look out. Um, or early, which is 
really fantastic because it'll tell you really early if you're going to hit something. This can get annoying, which is why you might want to set it to medium, but you should set it to your preference. I, have, I actually haven't found it to be annoying in early yet. Like it's it's given me a couple warnings for things I already would have noticed, but it, it's not like, you know, every time you go for a drive. Right. Then lane departure warning, you can turn this on. And, and basically what that does is it will give you some feedback in the steering wheel if you are going outside of your lane. Um, and this is helpful if you're driving on the highway without autopilot, it will let you know that you are going outside of your lane. So even though this is in the autopilot section, this kind of relates to just general driving. Lastly, there's the automatic emergency braking, which is a wonderful safety feature of this car. I suggest you keep this turned on. What this means is that the car will automatically apply emergency brakes um, if it deems that you are going to get into a collision. Now, it doesn't necessarily prevent you from all collisions and all accidents, but it can drastically change the outcome of a collision if you were to have one. Slowing down from, say, 50 down to 25 miles an hour before you hit something is going to make a big difference in whether you survive that accident. So, I suggest you just keep that one on. So here we are in safety and security. Now right now I am in drive and what you'll notice is that I can turn on the parking brake from here. What this allows me to do is basically put the car in park. I guess if you've broken off the stock of your <laughs> of your car, could be helpful, you never know. Um, you can also power off the vehicle. This is useful if you are you know, going away for a long trip and you don't want as much vampire drain. You can power it off. Um, it takes a minute to reboot it, but basically nothing bad happens. Uh, let's get into the gear icon here. Uh, park assist chimes. So this is when you're uh, pulling into a spot. The car has ultrasonic sensors all over it, which means that it knows the distance between you and obstacles that, um, while you're parking. It will make different beeps depending on how close you are. You can turn those off if those are annoying. Then here is where you turn on the security alarm. So if you have this set to off, if someone starts messing with your car while it's locked, nothing will happen. If you turn it on, the car will start to beep. And we have a video on this, by the way. Now, allow mobile access. This means your phone. Can a phone unlock the car? It's important to keep this one on, I would assume. Um, and then data sharing. This allows you to either say yes or no to the collection of your driver data to send to Tesla. If you want to, you can say yes. If you want to, you can say no. Uh, totally up to you. Lastly is service. Again, there's no gear icon there. So there is wiper service mode. If you click this, the windshield wipers will come up into the mode where you can actually replace them if you want to. You can adjust the headlights using your left scroll wheel, just like it shows here. You can adjust the height of your headlights. I would suggest that you don't do that. It says he that headlights should only be adjusted by a trained tech service technician. Um, and that is true. If you adjust it too high, you're basically going to be blinding people as you are driving along. So I would leave that to the professionals. Towing, in order to tow this car, you have to put it into towing mode. This basically allows it to be put on the back of a flatbed truck. And then you have access to your owner's manual, um, which can tell you everything about autopilot. So if this wasn't helpful, you can read up on your car from roadside assistance, to maintenance, to opening and closing doors and trunks and trunks and stuff like that. All of that can be found in the owner's manual. So that is every single menu in the Model 3 at the time of this recording, which is July 4th, 2018. Yes, yeah, so we have some bars here up at the top. Let's say you wanna lock your car. You may notice that there is no typical, you know, lock on the door. So if you're thinking of locking your car, you hit the little lock button. So now it is locked and now it is unlocked. Uh, one, one chime for lock, two chimes for unlock. Um, now when the car is locked, you can't open the frunk or the trunk, which is pretty interesting. Oh, can we just talk about this side of the screen? So this is like always here, isn't it? Yeah, so this is constantly here. And when you put it in drive, you have, you get a different view. Um, and if we were on a road, you'd see some lines and you'd see your speed up here. I'm gonna switch it back. I'm gonna put us back in park and you'll notice that this all changes. So this allows you to see what gear selector you're in. This would tell you the speed. This is your range. Um, this is the speed limit. You can open your charge port door from here and you can, can close it as well. I also like that it shows that you have different lights on, like you've got regular lights on along with your uh, fog lights on. Right, so if I wanted to change that, and turn off my lights, you notice that, that those go away. Here I can also get to my backup camera so we can see what is behind us. I can see how I'm doing in terms of charging. Um, and this is where you set your charge limit. Now, charge limit 
basically means what it charges up to. Now, the reason you might not want to charge to 100% every day is it's not great for the battery. Um, this is the reason that your phone batteries die after about a year or two years, um, is because they're charging to full every single day. On a car that has a range of 310 miles, it's a good chance that you don't need 310 miles of range every day. So you can adjust this to some different percentage. And basically what that will do is extend the life of your car. And then when you're happy, you hit done and then you're all set. This will tell you the last time you paid for supercharging and how much you paid. Um, you can even schedule charging. So you can use schedule charging to take advantage of off-peak electricity rates. Um, and then you can do charge current so you can limit how fast you're charging your battery. I don't know really why you'd wanna limit it, but maybe you wanna really extend the life of your battery, make it last 100 years. Um, you could limit it down to you know an amp if you really wanted to. Last across this row here is the voice activation. So if your passenger wanted to say, navigate to San Francisco, they could do that. Of course, you still have the option to uh, give voice commands just by clicking the right scroll wheel, navigate to Seattle, but the option is right there. This is the windshield wiper menu. Uh, we'll get more into that while we're driving. Um, if you scroll to the left, you'll notice that there are um, basically your trips. So your odometer is right here at the bottom. We've put almost 11,000 miles on this car. Um, it can tell you the distance you've traveled since the last charge, how much energy you've used, and your wattage per mile. You can set your own trips here. Instead of an A and a B, you can actually give it names um, and you can reset them. Um, and this will tell you not only your mileage, but also how many kilowatts you've used since then and your average watt hours per mile. So you notice that these are pretty similar because we did them uh, quite a long time ago. Um, and if you want, you just hit reset and rename and we'll rename this as test. This will allow you to track how efficiently you're driving. Um, I know a lot of cars usually just tell you how many miles you've traveled. Um, this will also give you your actual efficiency, which is super helpful. And if we scroll over here, you'll see your tire pressures and we can see that more when we're driving. Last few things here, uh, there's a little house with an arrow in it. Uh, this is if you have a home link, you know, it'll open the garage door for you um, from your car, which is pretty neat. You have the Bluetooth symbol, which is, allows you to connect to different phones. This tells you your LTE, which is, you know, how much cell service you're getting. Getting. You can hit the Tesla T, gives you your VIN number as well as your mileage, and even opens up your Easter eggs. So if you wanted to, uh, you could put yourself on Mars. Um, and then if you want, to, <laughs> uh, it shows you the very cool BFR. If you want to get rid of it, you just hit the Mars again. You can also just hit the Earth icon as well, um, and that will bring you back to Earth. So that's my name. Uh, you can hit that and then change your driver profile. And that adjusts the steering wheel and the seat to other drivers of the car. So if you have other people who are going to be driving the car, maybe in your family, you can adjust it so that they have their own settings. Now you'll notice that this even adjusts the distance between the car in front of them. So this adjusts the autopilot settings, which is pretty cool. You can see the temperature here. Unfortunately, we can't adjust the outside temperature just by clicking on it. That'd be a cool update. Uh, and neither can you do that with the time. So that's, is that coming? That's not coming, unfortunately. <laughs> you don't know if it's not coming. We don't know. But... Time adjusts, time warp. Oh, and my favorite thing is that it always tells you where you are in the world at the bottom of the nav screen. Right, because sometimes you're driving through a town and you say, wow, what a beautiful town. What road am I on? What road am I on in what town? And it tells you exactly that. Um, this obviously opens up the menu. This opens up the music. This opens up the dialer so you can actually call people and it has all of the contacts on your phone. These two right here are your heated seat buttons. This adjusts the temperature and you can sync the temperature. You can desync the temperature. Say I want to be really hot for some reason. I really don't, um, but you can sync the temperature to keep them the same. Now, if we hit this, we can adjust some of the climate setting. This goes to the windshield. This is sort of the direct to your face and this is, you know, your feet. This button- Can you have any combination you want? Can you do feet, like can you do all three? You can do all three if you want and it'll adjust the airflow accordingly. That's cool. You can adjust the speed up to 10. There's this here. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't just use a picture of your face, which would be cool, but you can adjust um, where the air is blowing from this menu right here. You yeah, can, and I can do it differently on my side. Right. Now, you can either have a diffuse setting, which basically diffuses out all the air so that way it's not blowing directly in your face, or you can point in a very specific direction. 
And I do want to point out that you can also recirculate the air in the car or you can have it bringing in outside air. And this controls the air in the back of the car. So you can turn on the rear AC if you want to, but for right now, since there's no one in the back seat, we'll turn it off. Oh, and then this is an important button. This allows you to adjust, again, the heated seats. So moving on, the last two are to deal with your front and rear windshields. So you can either blow cold air at your windshield or you can blow hot air at your windshield, which also turns everything to high. And you can turn on your rear defrost using that button as well. This allows the passenger to, to adjust the volume. So talk to me about over the air updates. So over the air updates allow the car to be updated and things on this screen change. Have the whole car change. Whole, have the whole car I mean, the, change. The braking can change. Updates work using either your cellular or now uh, Wi-Fi, which means that you can connect to your Wi-Fi router at home and, and update the car through that. And you can get notified on your phone that the updates are waiting to happen and you can let them happen through your phone. You can also let them happen through the car and it'll ask you what time you want to install it. You can actually have it install it right now if you want. Um, if it says like update ready, would you like to install right now? And then just keep in mind that while it's updating, you can't drive the car. So make sure you're updating when it's appropriate. And that's it. That's everything that you can adjust inside the car from the screen. We've touched every single button that there is. So that's... Well, except for this button, Jesse. This is the only button in the car that has a real physical button. Those are your hazards. That's because by law, it needs to have that. Um, also, I'll point out while I'm up here, this is how you turn on your dome lights. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.